All right. Yeah, buddy. Okay, so here's the deal. It's Wednesday, and I promised that I would be doing these uh, these uh, streaming videos two times a week, and uh, today is session number two. This is streaming on uh, multiple facets, or what do you want to call it? Multiple lines, whatever. So it's uh, it's on Facebook, it's on the YouTube channel, uh, it's on my personal Facebook and Strong Side. This will be published uh, to the YouTube channel later today. I mean, it's just Strong Side Nation, baby. So. Um, anybody tuning in, share this video with your friends, uh, comment below, whatever. I'm going to be looking at multiple cameras while this stuff's going on, um, so there's that. All right, so think of it, this is very similar to what we talked about the other day. The whole point of this is for you to get educated on how to be successful. Like, we weren't taught this in school. We weren't taught how to live a healthy life. Um, even if the, hang on one second, I'm going to turn off these fans. Hang on one second, I'm sorry. All right, I'm back. Sorry, sorry, I had to turn off that fan. Okay, so here's the deal. We weren't taught this in school. Like, you weren't taught how to live a healthy lifestyle in school. Um, maybe, like, at some small degree, like with a food pyramid and stuff like that. You weren't taught how to prevent against metabolic disease. You weren't taught how to live functionally and tie your shoes till you're 70. You know, we weren't taught... Well, what if I just crash diet? You weren't taught how to be healthy. You weren't taught how to prevent against disease. So this is like real stuff. This is going to be, what we're going to talk about today is the minimum physical requirement for life. We were never given a minimum physical requirement. We were never told, hey, this is what we got to do. We were given a minimum requirement in everything else. We were given a minimum requirement in, hey, uh, if you want to have a successful marriage, you should probably, you know, do blank, blank, blank. We said, hey, if you want to be uh, successful financially, you should do blank, blank, blank. And everything else has this minimum requirement. But us as a human being, human race, just to say we need to survive. We need to be able to, we're, dude, we're getting to the point where we can't even reproduce children because our bodies are that decrepit and full of so much disease that our reproductive organs can't even like do stuff. I mean, this is a, a whole nother deal because we need a minimum physical requirement for life. Like as a human being, what are the minimum levels that you need to be able to do? And when I go over this, you're gonna be very surprised, as basic as they sound, that most people can't even do the minimum physical requirement of life which is absolutely why you need to train. So I have some notes here just to make sure that I want to go over a couple of things, but all of this uh, is in all of our training. You can find a lot of this at the-strongside.com. Um, you can see all of our training and stuff like that. And uh, you can see a lot of our methodology. All right, so the first thing I want to do when you look at like, you know, before we talk about these minimum physical requirements, like what is it? So first off, I want to talk about some buzzwords, okay? So I'm going to write down buzz right here. Buzzwords. What is a buzzword? I'm not going to write them all out, but I'm going to write a couple of them out. Functional. Functional is cool. Functional. Um, high intensity. Let's, let's just write hit. Hit high. I knew I missed the letter in there. H-I-I-T, high intensity interval training. Um, let's see, uh, you know, um, like burn, feel the burn. Let's see, uh, you know, like, I, we can go on and on, but it, like, it, and, and I'm sure you could throw out a couple more things and whatnot, but those buzzwords, okay, when you hear, oh, in shape, there we go, there's another one. In shape, that's my favorite one. Healthy. These are all buzzwords, guys. Like, I want you to be successful. That's what all this is about, is giving you the opportunity to leverage this in your own life to preserve functional capacity and make you successful in your training, okay? So these are all buzzwords. Uh, functional, high-intensity interval training, um, burn, I want to get in shape, ooh, uh, <laughs> healthy. This food is healthy. Um, these exercises are healthy. I want to live and be healthy. When I say that, you're not hearing anything and I'm not saying anything. They produce no value because they have no measure. Nobody can tell you if you are in shape. 
Nobody can tell you if you are healthy. Um, what it, what functional, like what, huh? Like how are you gonna define that? You need to give them all a definition. So when you look at the minimum physical requirement of life, what I mean by that is a lot of people wanna say, okay, why are you training? The reason that you work out is you're trying to preserve something. You're trying to acquire something and then you're trying to preserve it. So you're trying to acquire the body fat percentage that you want, you know, a lean body, whatever you're trying to acquire, you know, big muscles or like whatever you want, you're trying to acquire the ability to run a long distance, whatever you want to do. But then you're trying to preserve it. You're trying to hang on to it for as long as possible. Whether you, whether you notice that or not, that is the, that's the point of training is to acquire the thing that you want to get and then preserve it. And functional means that not only should we get it and hang on to it, but how much value does it add to our life? Is what we're doing creating value, like a squat? What is that getting us? It's getting us the ability to move long levers over a long distance for a long time. If we can squat, we can still probably take care of ourselves when we're 80. So things like that. And you have to look at the value of what you're getting it for. Like if you just go out and you run 10 miles a day, is that getting you anything? No, because you can run 10 miles a day but you still can't pick up the dog food or you can't pick up a wheelbarrow and do some gardening. Like there's a whole lot of no's in there. Um, so that's what those buzzwords are, all right? And what, what the next thing I want you to look at is what is not exercise? I'm just gonna write X, sir, you, you get it. So. I'm gonna write not exercise. So what happens a lot of times is the first thing people do is they say, look, I want to acquire this and I want to try to preserve it and I wanna stay healthy, I wanna get in shape, I wanna pick a buzzword and then that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do the thing. So I'm gonna do the buzzword. I'm gonna get in shape and I'm gonna do whatever. And, and I get it, like I, going back to the first thing, we weren't taught this in school, we weren't taught how to get into shape, we weren't taught how to manage our work capacity, we weren't taught how to preserve functional capacity. Well, I'm gonna teach you today, all right? So these are your buzzwords, those are the things that you'll do, right? So then what is not exercise? So a lot of people think that, that the minimum things that they have to do in life are exercise. So let's just pick a couple, like the stairs. Walking across the parking lot. I'm just gonna put walking. Walking the dog, walking across the parking lot, going up a flight of stairs, a hill, a hill. I mean, we might as well just put like, look down, look up, and then look down, look, I'm doing exercise. No, you're not. Um, uh, gardening, um, like, I'm just gonna put real life activity. I could make this list a million things long, but I'm just trying to stay with a couple things. Look, and I know my handwriting is horrible, that's why I'm talking a lot. Going up and down the stairs is not exercise. That is something that you have to do to be a functional human being. If you want to just survive as a human, you have to go up and down the stairs. That is not exercise. Walking across the parking lot, walking your dog is not exercise. It is a thing that you have to do to survive on this planet as a human. To go to the grocery store, you have to park in the parking lot and walk in, okay? If you park at the back of the parking lot, you're like, I'm exercising today, and you're walking across, dude, you are broken, and we gotta fix that. We have got to make sure that that is not your minimum exertion level. Real life activity, gardening, uh, lawn work, mowing the grass, uh, let's see, redesigning your garage or putting new furniture in or, you know, grocery shopping, you got a new fridge, like come up with all these things. That's just part of life. That's just what you have to do. You just have to, you, sometimes you have to get a new refrigerator and you got to help them put it in. Sometimes, uh, you know, sometimes you do move and you got to be able to move things. Like that's just, it's the thing that is part of just being a human. Like it's like, a, it's like a wolf that can't hunt. It's like, you know, it's like a lion that doesn't know where to drink and get water. Like it, it's a thing that you have to do to survive. These are not exercises. These aren't even the minimum physical requirements. It's just a thing that you have to do. So minimum physical requirements of life. The three things that you need to be able to do, the three modalities that you need to be able to do at a minimum physical requirement of life is you need to be able to squat. 
you need to be able to do a sit-up, and you need to be able to do a push-up. That is the minimum. Now, we talked about this on my video on Monday. You can go back and watch this, but the preservation of functional capacity model, which is a model that I've uh, uh, developed and we're progressing. <coughs> but that preservation of functional capacity model shows you, okay, as I get older and I don't train, well, how does my body decline? But if the older I get, I consistently train, my decline is at a slower rate. So over time, I will slow down slower than everybody else around me. So when I'm 80, I have the body of a 60-year-old, not living in a hospital bed. You're trying to preserve functional capacity. The second that you can't do these three things, squat, sit up, and push up, is the second that you lose the ability to take care of yourself. That's when you lose functional capacity. That's when you risk going into a nursing home. This is when your quality of life starts going downhill. And you'll, add, you'll, you'll constantly be faced with can't. I can't do these things. I can't go up the stairs. I can't walk across the parking lot. That hill is just too crazy for me. We need to get a car. I can't do real life activity. I can't cut the grass. I need to hire somebody to do it for me. You can't start, you can't do the minimum physical requirements of life. And those three things are made from a squat, a sit-up, and a push-up. Anything that you do over that, so if I take a squat and I squat with weight, anything that I do above the minimum requirements, is raising my baseline. Like if you always want to be able to run two miles, then you need to go run every now and then. You need to go run like five miles. That way you're preserving your base of the two-mile goal. If you always want to be able to squat down and play with your kids and your grandkids and have a good time on the ground, get back up. Like a burpee is lay down to the ground and stand back up. That's what a burpee is. I get a lot of them are hard, but you should be able to do one. You just get down to the ground and stand back up. Like, you get what I'm saying here? Like these are pretty like normal things that human beings should be able to do. Lay on the ground and get back up, right? And look, I'm just talking real to you. Like I said in the beginning, like this is a no BS type deal. This is straight up what you need for fitness. I'm not here to judge you. I'm telling you what you need to do. I understand that we never learned any of this in school. We weren't taught this. I got you now and we're here to just preach the message, right? So you need to be able to do this stuff. And anything that you do above it, a sit-up, a weighted sit-up would be above a regular sit-up, a GHD sit-up, a push-up, okay? A handstand push-up is harder than a push-up. You see what I'm saying? The harder that you make the thing, the longer you preserve it, all right? So if I only do push-ups and I never do push-ups with a vest, I never do anything harder than the minimum, I will stay at the minimum and I won't preserve it, all right? <clears throat> so that's what you're trying to do. But then you say, well, what if... I can't do that stuff. I can't do a sit-up. Totally get it. Totally understand. If you can't do these things, that is the most largest red flag that you need to start training. You need to start training now, today. There's no excuses. Today is the new tomorrow. And I expect the phone call at the end of this video. All right? You need to go to the-strongside.com and just wake up, give me a call, and let's do the thing. Because the longer you wait, the harder it is to build. Now the good news is, is let's say we look at your squat, your squat. These movements have substrates to them. So things that branch off, all right? And basically they have ways or modalities to acquire them. So what we do is we take you on day one and we focus on movement. We get you to move and move well. And our first goal is to acquire these three basic movements. You have to be able to do the minimum physical requirement of life, whether that's pressing a bar over your head, a hand release push-up. Like all of these are progressions to get to the push-up. So we first focus on whatever your issue is and we focus on that to get, to get the acquisition of these three movements. Then once we get the acquisition of these three movements, meaning we can do them, we focus on the expression of the three movements, building a baseline of conditioning, progressing them up in difficulty. And in essence, we're now preserving it. So what we're doing is we're saying, look, if you can't do a pull-up, that's awesome, all right? I, like, I understand that you can't do one. You're not a bad person for not being able to do one. What if you could do five? If you go from zero pull-ups and then you train your butt off, I don't care if you're 65, 75 years old, you train your butt off, and you get five pull-ups, do you really think you're going to be worried about your body fat? 
Probably not. Do you really think that if you can squat your body weight, so put the amount that you weigh on your back and squat with it down and up, and then immediately go outside and run two miles without stopping, do you think you're going to care about what your cholesterol and your lipid panel and your glucose levels are? No, because you're putting in the work. You get worried about that stuff when you're not doing anything about it. And when you're doing these buzzwords over here, and when you're doing these things that aren't exercise, that don't apply any stress on your body, there's no adaptation, you're not growing. But when you start training the minimum physical requirements of life, and when you start going above those minimum physical requirements, you start preserving it. That's how somebody who's 60, you're like, wow, they sure are fit. Yeah, they did a good job of preserving these three movements. You will see, the dude, this is not preserving anything. It's helping some stuff, but bicep curls aren't preserving your ability to play with your grandkids. Like a squat, a sit up on the ground, a push up. Being able to do those things is what allows you to go to Disneyland when you're 70. It allows you to go travel the world. It allows you to go do and see the things that you've always wanted to do and see without aches, pains. I can't. Oh, I'm, I, I'm debilitated. I can't. I got disease. It's showing up as type 2 diabetes. It's showing up as high cholesterol. Showing up as whatever. You didn't move. You got to start now. You got to start today. I get it. You weren't taught in school this. I totally understand it. We weren't taught how to preserve this stuff. Maybe in your whole life you were never like, well, I thought I could just walk on the treadmill. I'm sorry. You can't. But you got to be doing all this stuff, all right? And that's what I want to get you started on. So you can, uh, you can check us out at v-strongside.com. Like I said, minimum physical requirements of life. You have to think this way. You have to train this way. You got to push it. I want you to be successful. Train the minimum physical requirements of life. Now that I've given you that definition, you can now go apply it. All right? So go apply it and have a good time.